My name's Justin Glenn. I'm from Data Direct Networks, we're a storage company, and I'm chairing the next two sessions. I'm delighted to introduce Mary Hobson to you. She's the Executive Director of URSA, Education Research South Australia, and also Ian Gibson, who's the Executive Director of Intersect. And he'll be helping Mary with the second session as well. So uh, over to you, Mary. Thanks very much. Good afternoon. Um, yes, we all shot in here because all kinds of meetings are going on at the moment, so it's quite interesting. Um, okay. Um, well, I want to talk this afternoon about Aero, and um, in a sense, it's wrong for me to have just my name on this talk because Aero is a whole collection of different people, and um, um, this is an overview of, of what we've been doing for the last year. Um, right, Aero started off um, with conversations between originally um, six of us who um, had been, who are all similar organisations. Um, we all work um, in state e-research organisations and, and we have some very similar interests, albeit in different areas. Um, we had all of us worked um, on ARCs and we felt that there were, uh, it would be terrible if we didn't continue to uh, at least talk to each other and there was an even more compelling reason why we should um, carry on talking and that was because we had some continuation of the ARC services that we needed to, um, uh, we needed to share between us. But the more we talked together, the more we realised um, that the new projects that were going to happen, um, namely RDSI and Nectar and some other um, uh, initiatives that were still, um, uh, that, were, that had been started previously, actually needed to have a forum to talk together. Um, and if we had a national body, that could start to collaborate. We could also start thinking about some necessary inter international collaboration. So what we formed was a non-organisation. Um, and I think in some senses that's become one of the real strengths of Aero. Um, we actually signed an, uh, a memorandum of understanding, and as Rob said when he formulated, he and Ian formulated this, this is an agreement to do nothing. This is an agreement simply to say we agree. And um, in fact, what's happened is that lack of, of pure organisation has allowed us to um, talk about a number of different issues without an obvious agenda. Um, merely giving us an environment in which a whole series of different organisations can come together. So, in 2011, in fact, in, in this very conference in 2011, we had an, an, an initial presentation to see if there was interest in the wider e research community to come together. And we had an enormous attendance. I think it was over, it was about 60 or 70, wasn't it, at that initial meeting? And there was an obvious um, um, meeting of minds, so we decided to do something in 2012. And we organised a forum in Sydney. Was it in Sydney? Yes, it was, wasn't it? And the agenda for that... Ah, oh, right, let's go back. Yes. The, the agenda for that was to... Um, was to see what was important to the e-research community, to establish issues that had a national priority um, across a number of different organisations. And we had a day's meeting which um, put together a whole list of topics um, that, we, that we wanted to see um, some interest in, and then we issued a survey uh, and we had some very, very interesting results. There were actually three topics that really came 
fairly well top of the agenda. One of them was a catalogue for eReach search tools and services. Um, there are many different organisations in Australia and elsewhere um, working hard on a whole series of tools for e-research, often software, um, that could be shared across a number of different projects, but it's very, very difficult to access information about that. But of course, that's a much more complex situation. And in fact, that's one of the things that, that um, the next session is going to address, is um, actually how you do that. Um, the second issue that came up was e-research skills. Um, skills in this area are scarce and we have the further problem of most people who work on these skills tend to work for short-term contracts because that's all that gets funded and so quite often we lose some of the best skills after the end of a project. It's very difficult to find continuity. So um, that was the second area. And the third area was support services, in particular help desk services, but in fact support in general. So um, having had the first forum, we then took for the second forum um, the two major uh, areas of support services and um, the um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> sorry. The support services and the help desk service and the um, and the catalogue services. Um, and in fact, both of those have actually gone on to do a, a great deal more work. We formed two working parties. Um, one headed uh, headed by Cordit, uh, and Patricia will talk about a little bit about that. And one. Um, headed by, well, actually the chairman ended up as Paul Sherlock, who is also a Cordit person, um, but it, uh, and, and they issued a, a working paper, concept paper, and in fact Ian Gibson's going to do quite a lot more about that particular issue. Um, so, um, the third forum happened earlier this week. In fact, it happened on Sunday afternoon. Um, and Jenny took that, um, uh, took the forum, and that was all about skills development. I actually found that incredibly helpful. Um, we have started to look at um, what we can do, what skills we should be looking at, not just the obvious skills, um, but also the skills that we need underneath, the kind of people we need, and how we develop those people. And we formed a team to, to uh, again, take this issue further. Um, at the moment, it's, um, it's Ivec, Cusif, ourselves, and Versi who are going to do this work. And of course, if anybody else is interested in this, we would welcome them onto the, uh, onto the working party. There's a lot of work to do in this area, and I suspect it's going to be a continuing um, issue, as indeed the other two are. Ah. Right, so this year we've got off to a good start and it's been very interesting that, um, that the lack of organisation allows a lot more involvement of different, of different people with different interests. Um, so we have to think about what we're going to do next year. We, we have to think first of all of what our agenda is going to be. Um, and. I think we probably should start off with, um, for instance, it's been suggested that our first forum should look at an action plan um, and maybe a survey of future needs. Um, I think also we have to think about how we are going to continue in the future. If this lack of organisation is a suitable structure for Aero, um, if the no funding model works because then it means that projects get funded by people who have a vested interest um, and, and if this is a possible continuity. Um, I suspect that this kind of um, organisation is probably only a, 
uh, a transient idea. Um, as e-research bec becomes more mature, um, so there'll be an increasing need for more structured national bodies. Um, but it, in the meantime, um, I think it's a, my personal feeling is that for, for an organisation like mine, this has been a very uh, satisfactory way of addressing issues that we can't address by ourselves and allows conversations that otherwise wouldn't happen. Um, so I would like to um, welcome other organisations to join. Um, it's not just joining Aero. We also welcome any organisations to actually come to the forum, to the fora, uh, and have a, a say. Um, so um, maybe we could have, we could start a discussion um, a little more about what we're going to do in the future, or any comments that people would like. Yes. Does the A stand for Australia or Australasia? It stands for, at the moment, it's Australia. <laughs> actually, no. Actually, we've had we've had people from New Zealand. In fact, in the first forum, we had who did we have? We had, it's, yeah. I did get an invitation, so that was great. But I had some attendance. Yeah, lots of hot topics in the last. Yeah. I talked to Jenny a couple of times about possibilities there, because we obviously have exactly the same problems. And yes. Yeah. And support needs and software catalogs and. Yes. Yeah. As I say, in the first for, uh, forum, we actually did have involvement from um, New Zealand. So, so yes, I don't think we'd. I don't think we'd want to exclude anybody. This organisation is not is not about excluding anything. <laughs> Maybe we should think about changing it to Australasia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any more comments? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Mary.